the biggest challenge I had in like figuring out what, what I want to do with the business or how I want to be rep- like how I want to show up was I wasn't being my authentic self. And so it was really hard to connect to my business because I felt like I had to be all these things, had to do all these things for my business to be successful, but that wasn't me. And so once I talked to Emily, I was like, I think I, one thing that you said, like really, really stuck with me. You said, it's your business. You could do whatever you want. And I was like, hell yeah, it is my freaking business. Welcome to the Coast Podcast. I'm Emily, a virtual assistant agency owner who left Amazon in 2019 to build my dream. And I'm Whitney, a freelance writer and communications consultant who never felt at home in a cube farm. We wanted to learn from people who paved their own ways like we did. So we created this podcast to talk to others who were brave enough to pick a different path. Creatives, entrepreneurs, people doing their careers and their lives their way. Join us as we make new friends, get inspired, and show you beautiful paths less traveled. Not every road leads to the coast, but the ones that do come with a great view. Hey everyone, welcome back to the coast. My name is Whitney Popa and I own a communications consultancy in Edmonds, Washington. My new tagline that I've had for a few months is words, workshops, and connections for your Pacific Northwest business, which means I write things and I do influencer marketing and host a whole lot of workshops for all of my little small business besties, which leads me into Emily, who also is a small business owner. I am. Uh, my name is Emily Given, and I own She's a Given, which is a virtual assistant agency and now officially a recruiting and staffing firm for administrative Woo. professionals. Uh, <laughs> that is like new and the first time I've said that out loud, really. So here we go. Today, we are speaking with Hay McGonagall, who is the owner of Horse and Serpent, which is a cosmetic tattoo studio. She was trained as a permanent makeup artist and is also a self-taught tattooer. Hay had been working in tech for years, but felt disconnected from the world. She wanted to make real human connections, help people feel more confident, and fulfill her need for more creativity in her life. As a first-time and still fairly new business owner, she's excited to share things that she wished she knew before starting her own business in hopes that it helps other entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for being here today. We are so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I mean, we're so excited too. So, I mean, we have known each other for, I don't even want to do the math on that. Um, I can't math right now. I haven't had very much coffee, but we met in fifth grade or fourth grade? Fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Was it Miss Arford and McGill's or Mr. Rubens? Both. It was Arford and McGill's first. That's where we met. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So fourth grade, we met in fourth grade. (laughs) Uh, Linwood Intermediate, which doesn't exist anymore. It's called Mm -hmm. Linwood Elementary School now. But Mm -hmm. we met all the way back then. And I wouldn't say that we stayed connected, but we stayed connected on social media, if that makes sense. So like we've always followed each other and knew who we were, but we actually just personally reconnected like a couple of years ago, last year. I mean, when I saw that you were in the entrepreneurship world, I was like, yes, go you. And then how we kind of just started chatting. So I would love for you to tell us more about your business. What do you do? Yeah, so I focus a lot on, well, I'm a permanent makeup artist or cosmetic makeup artist, or sorry, cosmetic tattoo artist. So basically I do a lot of like lip blushing, brows and scalp uh, micropigmentation. So folks who just want a little more density on their scalp, you know, after you lose a little hair or something, I'm there to give like a more permanent solution for that. And yeah, I, I just love what I do. I do tiny tattoos when I feel like it here and there. It's not my main thing because I just love, like I'm obsessed with lip blushing. So I try to focus on that a lot. I fully intend to do lip blushing with you, but as I've told you in lots of different, (laughs) lots of different messages, I'm so scared of the pain. Like, I think it's going to be really painful. Yeah, people actually fall asleep. So I haven't heard that it's painful. They're usually sleeping. So (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. You mean it's not painful like lip fillers? Yeah, I heard those are painful. Like lip fillers. Yeah. So walk us through the journey. How long have you, when did you start Horse and Serpent? And like, how did you, like, did you have like a definitive moment when you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go go after this? Yeah. How did I start Horse and Serpent? So it's kind of a long, like, winding story but I've been in tech for the last over five years or so got my master's in it and everything I mean not in tech but got my master's went into tech and I loved learning and I loved doing the day-to-day but overall I just felt like something was missing even though I'm talking to people every day that was like my job as a product manager just something I just felt like I was just in a little hamster wheel like I was just doing the same things And so then I was like, okay, I want to do something for myself. Like my husband and I got married and then we decided, hey, let's like do everything we want to do before we have kids because kids change your life, you know? And so I was like, okay, what do I want to do? And my mom has a salon. She's always done hair since I was like in her belly. And so I was like, oh, beauty school. I've always wanted to do beauty school. I love like anything artistic, painting, sewing, whatever. And so I was like, oh, beauty school sounds so fun. And so I went in with the intent of like doing lashes and doing like bridal makeup. And so I went into the program for aesthetics and it, I quickly learned it was not for me. It's not what I thought it was, but luckily a speaker came to school and she was saying, uh, she was giving this presentation about like permanent makeup. And I, I had my brows done before. So I was like, oh, I kind of know what that is. Like, let me learn more. So that's when I got really interested because it's very like artistic and it's technical. So I can like, I like things where I have to focus and just like do the, do like little intricate things for like hours. And so I was like, oh, this is appealing to me on so many levels. So then I took some courses and I really loved it. And I was really nervous, but I told myself, hey, you know, I said I would do something for myself. And so I went ahead and rented a studio and just started my business. My husband was very supportive. He had had businesses in on the East Coast when he was there. So he kind of mentored me. But yeah, that's how I got started. I just wanted something a little different from my day job. And this was very different. And it was really, I don't know, it, it was fulfilling just from the start. So that's kind of how I got started, how I got introduced and how I got started. Yeah. I had a question around being a product manager or also a comment. So my husband is also a product manager and I find that in his off time, he really likes to work with his hands. So he cooks, he builds things and it makes sense to me that you would do this. Even when I had my corporate jobs, I was always dabbling with something creative and it seems like a natural evolution to me that you would want to do those things. How did you get from permanent makeup to now tiny tattoos? Yeah, so as I mentioned, tiny tattoos are not like the main focus of my studio, but I love drawing and I just, I thought they were so cute. Like you see them everywhere, right? Like online. And I was like, that's so cute. And so um, when I'm interested in something, I get a little obsessive. And so I kept like practicing and practicing and like trying different stuff, getting, you know, my brother to come in so I could practice on him and like other models and stuff. And yeah, I just kind of, it was just more of like, oh, I want to try that too, you know, more than anything. (laughs) It just looked fun. Like even for your original business with the like lip tattooing, did you do a lot of practicing on people or did you make people pay you right away? So before I even took a human on, I had to practice a lot on like the fake skin and the person I took the class with. Yeah. And uh, I think you can practice on pig skin too, but that was just like too much for me. So I was like, I'll just stick to latex and like these molds and stuff. Ew, pig skin? Where do you get pig skin? I don't want to know. I think like the Asian markets, I have not gone looking for it, but it's like it just freaked me out a little bit it would be easy to find yeah but even before I can take someone on I had to practice a lot and then the person I was taking the class from 
she is so nice. She said, you know, any student can come bring a model into the studio. And so, but before I can bring someone in, she has to check your work to make sure the technique's right and you're not going to like rip up someone's skin. So then, yeah, like I only charge for, what is it? Materials, like needles and stuff. So it was like really low. And I did a few, like, a, yeah, I did some of those. And then I ended up taking models again just so I can redo my portfolio because no one told me that when you start this business or any business nowadays, you have to be a freaking photographer too. And I couldn't figure out lighting or like angles. And, and so a social all my media pictures, expert. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do everything. And I had no idea. I just thought, okay, just be like the best tattooing person ever, like best permanent makeup artist ever. Just have the best technique. And it's like, no, it, it doesn't matter if your pictures are terrible and you can't get the lighting right. So anyway, yeah. So I did some of that and then I started taking clients here and there. And then I was like, I, I can't do this. I just want to redo my whole portfolio. So I just, I, you know, did a call for models and I took some and then redid my portfolio. And then that's helped a lot, like a lot. My lash tech actually went to you for like, scalp repigmentation right no she did scar camouflage scar camouflage yeah so i'm like yes. I oh yeah I did that too. yeah so yeah you are, you are local then are you linwood everett yeah um i'm in uville area i'm like two oh, minute cool. drive from uville mm -hmm. awesome so very seattle yeah yes yep that's so cool yeah but did not start charging full price right away to go back to your question yeah yeah I wonder too, because it's like such a slippery slope with that, where like people will want to take advantage and like, how much do you invest up front versus mm -hmm. how people pay for something that you're worried they might not like, or, you know, whatever goes on there. Like you have to make money and you have to practice. So that mm -hmm. can be a, mm -hmm. a hard balance. Yeah, I think. I mean, totally, I've had a lot of those thoughts like, oh my gosh, if I, you know, what if the models, like, I think the biggest thing in this, this uh, industry I've seen is like referrals are the biggest source of like people advertising. You don't get a, as much at from uh, clients from, but referrals are. And I, and I think the biggest thing was like, oh my God, if I do these people for free or like at a discount, are they, are their friends going to expect that too? Because the prices change, right? Like as you get bigger, as you, as your technique gets better, you charge more and more and you know, like what would that look like? And so I um, struggled with that a lot, but I haven't had any problems <laughs> to be honest. Good. Like people awesome. who come, they're like, sure. Yeah. Cause for the first like couple, I think for the first month or so I did some promos to start the year. Um, I think most people do that. And so I was like worried, oh my God, this is more than what other people paid for when I was taking models or like, what about the people who paid full price already? And now they're seeing these like promos, what's going to happen? Yeah. Everybody's just super sweet. They're super supportive. Some people come back. I, I'm just, yeah. Like I haven't had any issues with pricing stuff or anything. Thank That's goodness. So yeah, yeah. That is good. People are paying you what you're worth. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the scalp stuff and some of the like scar things, because I feel like a lot of people don't know that they can do that. So will you talk a little bit about like some of these, I mean, a lot of it, some of it is vanity, insecurity, or just wanting to be beautiful. Like you don't have to have a reason behind it, but for some of these that are a little bit more vulnerable, like a scar or hair loss that people don't know they can come to you. What are some mm -hmm. kind of heartwarming things that have come out of that for you yeah so I for scalp mi micropigmentation or smp it's less of a mouthful for smp a lot of women come to me i think traditionally it's like marketed towards men who have like male pattern baldness and like those more extreme cases that's like the more popular thing that you see online but a lot of women come to me and um, they lose hair because of pregnancy or chemo or just sick, like they just, you know, health issues. And so they just feel, you know, they, a lot of folks say, hey, you know, like I have these insecurities about these like 
bolder spots or like the lighter spots and I can't put my hair back. I'm like wearing hats more and, you know, I just don't feel like myself. And after, you know, just a session or two, like, you know, I always check up on my clients because one, I want to make sure they're taking care of the investment that they made. <laughs> so I'm very hands on. And then two, I just want to see how they're feeling about it. And yeah, I, like everybody I've talked to seemed very happy. They feel more confident. They're like, yeah, I can pull my hair back in a ponytail. And, you know, they've said things like, yeah, my family, my friends and family, they notice something is different, but they can't say exactly what. And that's exactly what I want to go for. Like very natural and subtle, but you can still like tell that it, your hair looks fuller. And so just little stories like that really make it worth it for me. <laughs> but yeah, those, yeah, I mean, it's just those things where it's like, yeah, I couldn't like wear my hair back because you can see my scalp and now I can like pull my hair in a ponytail. It's just, it's so little that we take for things that we take for granted, but you know, some folks can't do because they just feel so self-conscious. And then with scar camouflage, I own, I don't accept all scars, types of scars. There's different ones that you can't work on, like keloids and ones that are like super raised and, you know, all those things. But yeah, it's, you know, some folks come in for like tummy tuck scarring. They want to camouflage that, camouflage that a little bit. So they feel more confident in like a bikini. Yeah, it's just really rewarding. I am very careful about how I represent my skills and like the results. And I, I think the biggest thing though, I love doing these more of, yeah, like the scalp and the scar um, work, but I want to make sure that people know that I'm picky on like which cases I take, because there are some cases that I'm not skilled enough to take on. Right. And I want to be like straight up or like results are not going to look good. Like whether it's me or just anybody, like I know that results, I mean, this tattoo is not going to be able to do what you think it's going to do. And then also I set like very uh, realistic expectations of how many sessions it'll take or like what the progress of the results would look like. And I think that is, has been like super helpful and people seem to appreciate that too, because I think one of the biggest things is when you have trauma to your body or like trauma to your heart, because you like you know, don't feel the same about yourself and you come in expecting like something drastic and like unrealistic, it's heartbreaking and that kind of leads to unhappiness. And so I think a lot of the success stories that I've had are because like, you know, I'm very like realistic and honest with clients too. I was curious, how did you pick the name Horse and Serpent? Oh, Yes. A lot of my clients know this already, but I'm like in my friends and family, I'm obsessed with my husband. Like I love him to death. I think he's the most wonderful human being ever. And he, sorry. Yeah. Um, he saved me. Oh, sorry. I always get emotional. He saved me from a lot of weird stuff in my life, like from myself. And oh, I'm just so grateful for him. And every freaking day he like, supports me whatever I want to do oh I'm so sorry I didn't think I would get this emotional no I love um, it <laughs> me too yeah and uh yeah I'm just so like grateful for him and my life has changed so much like 10,000 times better than it's ever been and it's because of him so when I started this of course he had my back 100 percent we didn't know what it was going to mean for us we didn't know what it would look like or how it would change our life. But he told me, you know, as long as you're happy, like I want you to do this and I have your back. And that's just, I don't know. So I wanted to dedicate the studio to him and like our relationship. So in the Chinese Zodiac, I'm a horse and he's a snake. So that's why horse and serpent. It's kind of, uh, uh, yeah, it's just me being obsessed with him even more. Aww, <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, love that. I'm, I'm a so tiger. Sorry. I have so much feline yeah. energy in me. It's crazy. I'm also a horse, but that makes sense. Yeah. We're the same age. Yeah. And he That's so cool, let, though. I yeah. love that story. Me too. Uh, but he hasn't let you, you experiment on him much. So. <laughs> yeah. But he's <laughs> oh, He's let me experiment on him uh, with like beauty school stuff. Cute. He came in and let me wax his back. Yes. <laughs> Ouch. Yes. Yeah, what does was, he yeah. do? He's um 
project manager for concrete. So he does concrete finishing. But yeah, he's not like the pro. Yeah, he's such a weirdo. He's not like one of those project uh, co- construction project managers who like stay in the office. He loves going outside and working in the field. So he still finishes concrete. Like he's on his hands and knees, like freaking <laughs> smoothing out concrete and stuff still. So yeah, he's just a jack of all trades. Aren't they all? It's like annoying. They have like yeah. so many talents. Yeah. And I'm just like, how do you do everything? And how are you so good at everything? Like, and I'm how just are you so likable. It's an, it just is so annoying. Makes me mad. <laughs> yeah. But it's beautiful <sighs> too. That's so cute. I feel like yeah. my husband, if I went to beauty school, he would totally let me wax his bag but right now because i have not gone to beauty school we fight <laughs> when he asked me to do it so he got himself a tool and thankfully my cousin's a sugarist and so i'm gonna say uh-huh. why doesn't he go see chandler she wants yeah. she wants to do him she should he's yeah. just hesitant now because he's got this like back scratcher thing that also shaves the hair oh my gosh that's oh. funny interesting hey what yeah. okay so you've got the studio what's your mm-hmm. vision like for the studio and for yourself like what yeah. what do you want tell me everything yeah. you want <laughs> so 